Hi everyone, um, I just thought I'd put this video together because of the interview that I did earlier today, um, we cut off probably about the first five minutes. Um, it's probably one of the best interviews uh, that I've done over the last few years. It's a chap by the name of Chris Morn, who's the chief exec of an organization called IPRAC and also the founder of AES Events. Um, Chris is a Northeast lad and he moved to Cannes 20 years ago to set up his property business and it's grown over the years now and he's a hugely successful entrepreneur. And it's a fascinating, fascinating interview and Chris um, really shares his wisdom on life and business. So where we pick this up is where Chris is just explaining um, in the middle of explaining why he moved to Cannes. Um, it's fascinating. So enjoy the interview. Please, um, as always, like, share and comment uh, below. And um, uh, we look forward to uh, putting out this video and uh, getting your feedback. Thank you. And, 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 and left, but when I got here, I, re I did know exactly what I needed to do because the industry itself was kind of, it was, there was a lot of people in the space offering accommodation and, mm -hmm. and not so much events because events 20 years ago wasn't as big as it is today but accommodation was corporate accommodation was quite big so you know a lot of people said you know this space is already there's too many people in it Chris I mean starting a business in this space it's just uh, it's not a good idea so but you know I learned I learned many many years ago when I was about seven, 16 17 somebody said to me there's always room for the best yeah and that was the kind of attitude that i had i said well i'm going to enter the space and just work hard to become the leader or the best at what we do and it didn't take it didn't take that long to to to, to path out the which way we were going to go and um and try to build that corporate identity of offering corporate accommodation apartment accommodation not hotels but at hotel standard yeah. and that's what we did you know so um so yeah, 20 years, but I mean, coming down to the south of France, I didn't speak a word of French, obviously. Yeah. A little bit that I'd learned at school. But um, so, so building a business in a language that you didn't really speak, that was quite difficult. Um, but it didn't put me off. I mean, it was just more of a challenge and like, like, you know, just another challenge to get over. And just, yeah, we just kind of started there and, you know, just kind of learned how to you know, I think most businesses, if you just learn the business, I'm a big believer in stick to your trade, you know, find something, continue at it, and don't veer off too much, you know, and just keep bashing away at what you're doing and you learn every day. And, uh, you, and then one day you're going to become good at it. If you do it long enough, you're going to become good at it. Yeah. So, so I think that's what's kind of developed. And today, you know, 20 years on, we, like I say, we're doing accommodation for some of our clients are like Google. Twitter, Fox, Disney, mm. and we do all their corporate accommodation. So, you know, we've 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 got to that level of um, of where we class as uh, is succeeding within our business model. So, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> I know it's probably a question that you've been asked and thought about for 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 the last eight weeks, mm. um, and your industry sector has has had a huge impact with what's been going on with the backdrop of. COVID-19 and coronavirus and, and, and so, so tell me from your business perspective and the industry's perspective um, how you've reacted and how, what effect it's had on your business. Um, well, in which bit, I mean, the, the accommodation business? Yeah, the accommodation part, yeah. We'll yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it's hugely affected in that sense because obviously we were we run like all the accommodation and events throughout the season. So that our season starts in March with the MIPIM festival, which um, it's about, you know, like a 25, 30,000 delegate Congress all descending on Cannes. So normally we're doing around about 260 rentals during that period. Yeah. So, so anywhere between like 1.2 million turnover within that short space of time. And, that was the festival that we actually had all had been paid for because it was so close to the event we'd already received the money from the clients um so that was cancelled that was the first cancellation that we saw mm. and that was kind of like the the knock-on effect of another 
other events cancelling. So all of a sudden, now the position we know that we're in now, there's going to be no events in the 2020 calendar. Yeah. So that's tough because that's like, uh, you know, it's, it's about like 12 million pounds worth of business for our company. And that's kind of hard to, to not generate. But we've, what we've had to do is we've had to work with our client base to, to offer them transferring over to the next calendar year, free of charge, so no administration costs. Or if they do want a refund, then of course we have to honour that as well. So, so we've been doing our best to try to transfer them so we can protect our revenue, but it's hard. It's, a hard, it's hard because, um, you know, people, as well, clients are a little bit in distress, so they don't know what they want to do. So some of them are in panic mode where they're demanding a refund, but we're kind of saying to them, is that really the right decision for you to do? Because if you get a refund, that cancels your accommodation and venue that you've had for so many years, which means it can go back on the market for somebody else for the, for the following calendar year. Yeah. And then they're kind of, ah, wait, we don't, we haven't, no, just wait a little. So we're yeah. still even in that place now. We, it's, it's all about trying to go slow yeah. and advise our clients on what the, the best possible outcomes are for yeah. them. Um, but the biggest challenge that we, not so much of a challenge, but what we had to make sure is that, and a good thing that we, all of our clients trust us yeah. and trust us everything in this business. And, mm. and as we work with our clients that we've started to, they've started to understand that credit notes and holding back the um, transferring the revenue over to the next calendar year is the, is the way forward. But I know that that's our industry as a corporate industry. I know that there's people in this industry who are not in corporate and they're doing, you know, like Airbnb and that, and they're severely affected yeah. because they've just got their, their travels not happening and their business is just on, on hold, you know? But I mean, one of the biggest things for us is, as well, Cass, is that we changed our business model in 2009 because okay. we, went, we went through, the, we went through the, the 2008 financial crash. Yeah. We, that was when we were, we were building our company and we went from like a three million pound turnover to about 1.1 in, in the space of about nine months. Wow. And, and that was probably the hardest part. I probably suffered more back then than I am yeah. today because I wasn't prepared yeah. for it. And we had like, you know, like 23 staff. We had two officers. We had, you know, a lot of overheads that we couldn't just cancel. So yeah. that I learned a lot from yeah. that experience. And we yeah. kind of rebuilt the business to be more sustainable. Mm. Not so much kind of using a lot of outsource, outsourcing techniques and you know looking at your PL more and i think that's where a lot of businesses today they're trying to go so quick to the top and not realizing what they're building yeah and and you've got to build sustainable businesses not fast sustainable so that when think, a crisis comes you're ready i think uh, that's a really valid point that you make you see some of the some of the big big brands that we've that we've looked up to over the last god knows how many years as you're growing yeah. up, you look at those big, big brands. I won't mention them, but all of a sudden, they haven't got cash flow for one month, yeah. and that's a that's really been astonishing to me to think. Well, actually, yeah. me as a business in, in our you know SME, we're doing we're doing all right. Actually, we've I built it in the right way, so we've got sustainable for the next you know God knows how many months, and save for a rainy day, and that's what it's for for unprecedented times. That well, it's, it. it's reserve, isn't it? It's having yeah, that. It's, it's, having that but it, that's all about managing your business. Yeah. And I think a lot of people today are kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. And that mentality. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I did that myself at the start. But you've got to get. There's got to be a certain time when you you start to put infrastructure in your business that can support. Um, you know, like a, a, a forecast. So when you look yeah. at your P and L, you can say if something was tragic or, uh, you know, something that affected our business in a big way happened yeah. tomorrow, how long can we survive? And you've got to always be looking at adding time onto that, you know, yeah. maybe one time it's one month. If you can get to one month, fantastic. 
but then you then your next target's got to be three months yeah. and four months and yeah. five months and yeah. and then at one point you might get to a point where you say you know what we're sustainable for a year yes. without any income yes but again you've got to be working on your variable costs and your fixed costs yeah there's too many people have got fixed costs today and it's a different mentality as well you've got this startup mentality which is all about fast growth investment talent you know you know bringing big talent into your company yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and not looking at profit yeah and then you know i mean too many businesses today are not looking at profit anymore and i and i don't get that yeah you know i think you've got to take people back to like old school of business and it's like you've got to be earning a profit yeah yeah. You know, and, and that, I mean, that's my way of thinking. And so back in 2009, we rebuilt the, the business to be more sustainable. So when COVID-19 happened, although it was devastating, yeah. we, were, we were built to survive. Yeah. So, so, we, um, so we can survive it. And, uh, and, we'll, and we're actually, we're actually got the mindset to go on and thrive. And I think that's a different, you know, when things like this happen, you've got to decide whether you're going to go down or up. And, and you know luckily we're in a position to just platform and keep going up and we're looking at doing some property investment because we already have about 19 of our own properties which okay. we've invested over the in building over the years yeah so we'll get into that because property prices are going down so um but yeah i, I think overall the whole hospitality and travel industry is massively affected and i don't know when it's really going to get back well, it's not going to go back. I mean, saying go back to normal is the wrong, is the wrong, wo the wrong words to say because it isn't going to go back to how it was before. Mm. But I think a lot of people are, are not get, they're not preparing themselves for the change. Yeah, and that, I was reading, a, reading a, a post that you put out and I think it was something and, you know, you hear a lot of it that there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a shift in and we certainly are as a family talking about this. Um, so the shift, shift in psychology of the psyche in, holiday in, in your country yeah massively we're taking breaks you know so we're thinking about you know let's see what, what's going to happen you know there's going there's going to be flights is there not going to be flights etc well you know let's go to the north of scotland or let's look around england because that's there's some beautiful places here so that there's going to be yeah. that shift are you then adapting your business model to kind of say well i know you don't look after the holiday lets and stuff but but I'm talking about businesses. Are you going to be now kind of marketing to businesses more in France to have this kind of property that you that you that you provide? Is no. that something that you're looking at, or is this no? We won't. Business? We we won't change our we won't change our model. Yeah. We don't need to change our model. You know, we'll we we'll be waiting now for the 2021 Congress season here in Cannes, and then we'll yeah. we'll go back to how we were before. Maybe a little bit. There'll be less delegates coming to the event but i think yeah. that's that's um that's again going to take time to build but i think overall in the travel yeah yeah that's absolutely right i mean people are definitely not you know domestic travel is going to be the the, the key and if i can give any advice to anybody who's a, a property manager or a property owner who's looking to get out the other side of the COVID 19 is to is to concentrate on clients within their own country you know because that's in destination marketing is key yeah. because it's, you know, like we all know, it's, it's like the accommodation is a secondary to the destination. Yeah. You go, you know, and a lot of people don't know that because it's like you decide to go to Scotland first, yeah. then you decide, then you decide where you're going to stay and then you decide what you're going to do when you get there. So it's destination first, accommodation second and activities and experiences third. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand that. So you've got to people have got to start looking at where their accommodation is. Yeah. So let's say if you're in Brighton, yeah, or if you're in Scotland, you've got mm. to go around and really drill down into where you are, where your core properties are, and what can you provide people within? Because I know many people in the north of England have never been to Brighton. Mm. So that's you've got to you've got to go and start looking at how can you market your properties to people in the northeast of england to get them to come down to brighton now how would you do that you yeah. should you should be advertising how quick the trains are the price of the trains where you'd get the train from and to you know the, this is all destination marketing yeah. so you can 
So you ah, let's go to Brighton. We go and do that. Look, yeah. there's an there's an itinerary we can follow. Yeah. And an and a nice three bedroom apartment to stay. Yeah. Let's book it up. So I think waiting for this Airbnb um, system to come back is um, is not the way forward to for, for for thinking for property managers and owners. I think they need to get more on board on direct bookings. Yeah. Um, to have more control of their business mm. and and destination marketing for the certainly for the first twelve to eighteen months before international travel may start to open up and yeah. and people start to travel uh, again. Yeah. So that that's a, kind of a nice segue. You, mean, you mentioned um, Airbnb segue mm. to, to your iPrac brand, which is something ah, yes. you've, yeah. you've, I know you've worked really hard on. So yes. tell us a little bit about iPrac, what what the thought behind it is, and and what it delivers um, as a, as a business, and, and and why you did it. Yeah, well, yeah, iPrac came back in 2014, so it, it came from a situation that happened here in Cannes uh, back in 2014 when we were, we were contacted by a family who'd booked a property. Uh, it wasn't on the Airbnb platform, but it was. They booked a property through a, a very, very well designed website rental agency that they built. They paid like fifteen thousand pounds for this two week rental uh, in a luxury villa up in Supercan. Only to find them when they got there, it didn't exist, and oh. they were stranded. They were stranded on the side of the road with like about eleven, well, six or seven suitcases, um, three children. 10, 7, and I think six, five or 6, wow. and not speaking the language. And the first thing that they did was obviously went on to Google and tried to find an accommodation company, which they came to, to our company, called our office. We got them down to our office. We sent a car to pick them up, and I'd realized that they'd been frauded. And I, and I did know that fraud, fraud existed within our industry, but not to that, not to that level. And, and it was kind of watching the emotional state of this family in my office was kind of like, you know, it was really upsetting. And it was kind of, and it was the industry that I was, had a lot of passion for. And I've got three children myself. So I thought, God, if I was in that position, like somewhere that I didn't speak the language with my yeah. wife. And it was just the emotional side of it though. I mean, the husband was blaming the wife, the wife was blaming the husband. And this is all going on in my office. So eventually we got them, put into a, into a really nice apartment that we manage. And at the end of it, I said, no, this, this can't be the case. I mean, we need to find a way where we can protect consumers, making sure that they can rent from legitimate operators. Yeah. And, you know, after like two years of research, development, backwards and forwards, yeah. ideas, with three, three website attempts that failed uh, before we found our our partner that we've got today and after two years in april 2016 iprac was launched and born and and it's just since it was launched it's just gone uh, it's just gonna you know because it was it was what's needed you know consumers yeah. were taking huge risks mm. huge risks just booking people booking through people they don't know i mean it's like there's no trust there's no confidence and that's what iprac does so we verify property managers Mm -hmm. and property owners as legitimate they yeah. go through a very robust and a robust application process yeah uh, they have to give us a lot of supporting documents and then they become approved and they get their iprac logo and what that does is gives them that logo to put on their own website mm -hmm. that they can direct consumers to their id number yeah. on our platform so they can verify their member and register their booking on the platform and secure all of their rental payments so they're guaranteed 100% against fraud. Yeah. And in a short four years, we've reached just under 45,000 members. Wow. Yeah. Not a big number cons compared to the size of the market, yeah. but, for, for, but verification is still very, it's not, it's not, it's not really on, operators minds right now they still don't believe that that's the way that the rental industry is going to go but it is yeah um so the quicker you can get verified and start you know 
proving to your consumers that you're a legitimate operator, the more business you're going to generate. Yeah. And we're in 28 countries to date. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, to be honest, it kind of came off as an idea to protect. And it's kind of, it's, it's actually taken up more of my time as a CEO of IPRAC than it is as the CEO of AES, which is normal because AES has been going 20 years. But I didn't expect it to be where it is today in four, in, within four years, that's for sure. And, and, and how important um, has digital been for the growth of IPRAC? Did, uh, the, the only, I mean, we wouldn't have been able to grow without it. Yeah. Because it's just the, it's the actual, you know, I mean, the old, because people don't, people don't go searching on Google for IPAC. No, people they don't go, they, they wouldn't do it, you know, people don't go searching for, for certain things. And that's why you've got to bring that thing, that, that thing to them. Yeah. And so the only way to do that on mass scale is through digital marketing and i think that's what we did it through but we did it very wisely we didn't go and throw like stupid money at it we've got we've got a we've got a good team we've got some great content writers i know you know one very well of our neely she's fantastic um i can highly recommend her but she just writes in a way where we've been able to send the message out to consumers and operators that this is what you need to do. And yeah. I think most professional operators, once they understand what verification is yeah. and how it can improve their business, they they soon become on board. I yeah. mean, let, let's face it. Today, most property managers are having this one-to-one -one conversation with a potential guest. Yes. And that potential guest is in the back of their mind, they're thinking, can I trust this guy? Can I trust this agent? Yeah. And the agent's going, you can trust me. Look at my reviews. I've been gone five years and it's not enough. No, fraudsters, not. fraudsters are aware of all these kind of techniques. So they can, they can quite eat. I mean, 7.8 million was lost in the UK alone to fraud in 2018, 2019. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So you can see that fraudsters are, are, are making a lot of money out of this industry. Yeah. So it's important that we use digital marketing to get the message out to the right people through content writing and not so much direct selling. We don't direct sell. Yeah. We're not interested in direct selling. We show the value of IPRAC. Yeah. And then if people believe that the IPRAC, the, the value is there for them as a business and as a brand, yeah. then they can get on board. But we don't, we don't, we don't direct sell our brand to anybody. It's a value. If you see it, come and get it. If you don't fine, we understand no problem but we let the industry decide but it's 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 changing the industry yeah yeah so you said the verification process is very robust in terms of the checks and balances yeah. that you put in place and i don't want you to go into it in, in loads of detail and stuff to, but i'm sure it's so can you just tell me so i don't let's say i've got a, a property i mean yorkshire dales yes yeah, and i want to get verified Tell me, tell me some of the steps that you would take for me as an operator, as a property owner that I want to that, that I get yeah. verified. Well, what you would you would apply first online through the platform, yeah. and part of the so you've got the application side, and then yeah. you've got supporting documents side, and some of the supporting documents vary depending whether you're an agency or a private owner, yeah, and and also depending on what country your property is yeah. based in or your agency is based in. But generally, we're looking to get the application information, and then the and then the the supporting documents kind of match. And we've and we've invested a lot in technology, mm. so we can do. Like, we need to have your passport, the la your bank, um, your bank account details, your telephone number, your email, mm. your proof of address, yeah, all your social media links, if, um, your corporation of company depending on what country you're in so we get all of these documents and then we can run it through our technology and we're probably around 60 percent of our verification process is done manually okay in our man in our manchester office and 40 percent is done through the the technology that we've invested in over the years and that's so we would do specific checks yeah. on you to make sure that you are that person and that's yeah. your property yeah. and if you're not prepared to go through the application process 
mm-hmm. and we can't verify you. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's all about data, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? I can't verify anybody without having the data to be able to look at and do the certain checks. Yeah. And we've and obviously we've got the we've designed the uh, the magic sauce, if you want to call it, of how yeah. we how we do the verification process. But to do the verification process after we guarantee that person is a member. So all payments made to that member are one hundred percent insured. So if somebody writes them, yeah. Yeah. So you know, so you pay the person booking. Yeah. So that's why we need to do the verification process yeah. in a robust way. And I think there's a lot of people out there who say they they do verification, but you know, I mean, to to say you do verification through AI or or looking at the last five reviews of your last five rentals, you can't verify somebody on them on that basis. You need yeah. the data, their passport, their proof of ownership, their last utility bill, their email their phone number there's a lot yeah. of checks that we go through which a fraudster cannot pass yes they wouldn't pass it because they wouldn't even as soon as a fraudster had to put their passport up they're, they're, they're gone they're not yeah. they're not going to try and go yeah. through a process because they we're going they're not going to pass the the test the, the the approval system so 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 tell me you know what, what's the plan for the future now what, where you're looking, what you know, what what what's what you you're looking ahead to probably 2021 now, and you've probably written off this this year in terms of, you know, you, for you, IPRAC? But, no, yeah, I mean, for IPRAC, IPRAC? No, I mean IPRAC. No, I mean business. Well, what's, IPRAC what's is position? different. Yeah, but IPRAC's a little bit different because yeah. IPRAC is now becoming a, a product and a brand that is serving people yeah. in this difficult in this difficult time because okay. with all of the with all of the situations that are coming out of the booking platforms and the OTAs like Airbnb, booking.com, they're, they're really alienating their hosts, their assets, Yeah. which at the end of the day, Airbnb can't operate. They can't operate without clients, of course, but if they've got loads of clients and no properties to put them in, they haven't got a business. Yeah. So I think Airbnb have made some, some catastrophic errors in the way that they've dealt with the situation of the COVID-19. Is this by not Which paying lot, them back and stuff? Not just that, but that's probably one of the main things because I mean yeah. they've just they've just pulled the rug under a lot of these hosts who were expected to you know eighteen thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand worth of revenue under very tight cancellation policies, and Airbnb just took the decision for them, which is wrong. Yeah. Um. And and I think Airbnb have made these catastrophic errors, and it's affecting the confidence and the trust that hosts have within their brands now Mm. and now they're looking to go more direct but to build a direct booking business is a lot is a lot harder than what it sounds you know because you know consumers trust OTAs they do yes they spend billions of dollars and pounds every year to gain household consumer trust let's book through booking.com let's book through Airbnb so for a guy in New York to book directly with Jeff from Southampton you know there isn't a yeah, there isn't yeah. a lot of trust in there, so yeah. that's what IPRAC does. It gives that balance and it builds that bridge of confidence between the consumer and the host. So it helps them build direct booking businesses. And I think that's why today we're seeing a big intake of inquiries into into IPRAC. Yeah. But what we did decide to do was we looked at it from a business point of view, and we decided to give back to the industry and and launch an initiative which yeah. now iprac is free to join for the month of may okay um to try to give back to these because i i you know i went i did an interview uh, about three weeks ago or four weeks ago telling property managers and property owners to uh not to spend money that unnecessarily yeah and then so then at the same time i'm thinking but I'm expecting them to go and pay for IPRAC approval, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of thought to myself, you know what? We're going to make a really brave decision. Yeah. And we're going to invest back into the industry and we're going yeah. to open up the platform to give, yeah. I think we've invested about a million pounds right. to, to date. Um, to just to let property managers test verification. So yeah. that might, you know, and, and see how it works for them as a business. So they get IPRAC membership for 12 months for free. Nice. And then if they want to renew it in year two, then they will pay, of course, but they get the first 12 months free and they can, 
they can start building a direct booking business through having IPRAC approval. Because yeah. like I said before, it builds that bridge of confidence between the consumer and the, and the host. So, so we, we could be thriving right now, but I don't believe that it's the time to thrive. Yeah. I think it's the time to give back to your industry and they'll reward you for it two, three, four years down the line. And I think, I think that's what business businesses should be going down that road. I think you're absolutely spot on with that kind of strategy. It's like, you know, you've got to do what's right now. Exactly. The environment, and then, you know, you'll be rewarded with that, that further on down the line. I think well, it's, it's a true. good long-term view on things. It's not, it's not even that long-term. It's just when things, people remember things like that. And as we were saying earlier, you know, some of the brands, the way that they've behaved, some brands have behaved amazingly well and then other ones haven't be behaved very, not so well and and i was i put out an article just the other week that the people that have done the right thing and stood by their their customers and their employees when we come out of this you know the, the in terms of loyalty the loyalty of that that brand with that particular consumer um will will increase tenfold so absolutely you know, the right the right thing to do and uh it's you know, a hard decision to make though for a brand yeah. it, 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 this is the thing it's a very hard decision to make because you can't you've got to look at the long term and not the short term and i think people are looking short term it's like getting the money to survive yeah but, but you can't get in the money to survive now and alienate your clients and your customers for 12 months 18 months down the line and then you won't have a business anyway yeah. so it's a hard brave mo uh, move to make but i think we've made the right one to support our industry and and listen at the end of the day listen i don't i don't mind anybody selling at this point got no problem with that i believe in it but i think i i don't believe that selling is easy yeah so don't so you shouldn't i'm not telling people not to sell i know there's a yeah. lot of yeah. people on social media going oh it's wrong time it's not fair it's not right i disagree i think people should have the right to sell yeah. their product yeah but because it's a hard sell I advise you not to do it yeah but i've got yeah. nothing against you trying but i think you should be looking at a different strategy and not selling and look to, to where you can bring value to your industry and let your consumers see you as a as a as a brand that cares yeah. and that will and that will build you for the for the future well yeah you know and, you know we have this saying in our business that you've got to rent the space in someone's mind you know and brand is built by investment over passage of time so you know that's whether that's money or that's doing the right thing and adding value you know you've got to, you've got to keep doing that over a period of time and, and ultimately it's brand value that, that really kind of sets you apart from everything else and i think you've built the the iprac brand and when i when you see it it feels to me because brand is all about how you feel safe yeah yeah exactly yeah well that's well, that's, that's what we're yeah, trying to achieve it feels safe it feels like rock solid you know i'm, I'm yeah. investing in something that's that's going to help me have peace of mind yeah yeah which is key which is key to and the other thing as well you've got to think of is when we're as in a lot of property managers who we speak to mm. would probably turn on and say we don't need verification we're a legitimate company we've been working for many years we have a lot of reviews. We've got our own client base already, and I and I understand all of that, you know. And it's you know I'm, I'm in the business as well. A lot of property managers don't know that I've been managing a property management company for 20 years, so I know where they're coming from with what they're saying. But what you do to ease your customers' ease in their own minds, whether you think you need verification or not, invest in it anyway, so that you can show your consumers, look what we've done to help you understand who that we care more whether you need it or not yeah. we care we yeah. care and i think showing showing that your brand cares is is what counts yeah. for, for for longevity in a in a business you know it's uh that, that's the key factor you know and, and and trust and confidence because if you don't have consumer trust and confidence you you're going nowhere yeah. fast yeah so you know so, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish off now, but I just want some of your wisdom now. What do you, I'll try <laughs> three tips on, um, on, on, um, I know we talked about success and happiness and before mm. we started, and I know yeah. you're a big advocate of, of happiness, 
Yes. In terms of business, someone that may be just starting out, someone's going through a bit of trouble like you did in 2008 and what's yeah. happening with the backdrop of coronavirus. Give us some of your wisdom to share with, with, uh, with, our, with my audience and our audience. Mm. What would you, what would you okay. say the three things would be? Um, good question. I mean, everybody's, I mean, what I think, I think first, the first thing that you've got to do is accept where you are. That, yeah. Like, but, but make an honest, this is not kind of like, oh, I'm okay. I'm not okay. I am okay. We're okay. Make an honest assessment of where you are within your business. Yeah. And that is the first thing. And then accept it because you can't move forward if you're not accepting it. And that works in, in, in life and everything, not just in mm. business. You've got to accept where you are before you can move forward. Yeah. And, and I think that's the first thing I would say to people is analyze where you are honestly yeah. and truthfully and then accept it. Some people can take up to six, seven weeks, two months to accept it. Back in 2009, I took a long time to accept that our business was going to fail, you know, and that, and, and that was one of the biggest problems that I made because I wasn't prepared to accept so because I didn't make the acceptance, I didn't start making strategies to improve. Yeah. So first one is, is to accept where you are. Second one is to look at all of your, make sure that you have a P&L. Make sure you have a P&L. If you don't have a P&L, then you've got to go and get one. Love it. And, yeah. if, and, if, and if you don't know how to do one, find somebody who does yeah. and, and work on it and understand it. Because if you can look at your P&L, it will tell you, everything about your business yeah. everything and and again there's no point being putting like you know crazy figures in a pnl you've got to be yeah. honest it's like yeah. anything you've got to be honest and that will tell you where you're going where you are where you can where, where's going to be some tough times and a pnl gives you that map of structure so that would be the second one yeah and the third one then i would say is be easy on yourself. Okay. Get some structure. Mm. And when I say by structure is, I mean, plan. Yeah. And, and I'm a massive planner. So, you know, I'm a big believer in your day starts the day before the night before. So you know what exactly where you're going to go and you've got to value your plan, you know, because I think too many people today, every day is different. They get up, the routines are all over the place. So you've got to get your routine on point. Now that doesn't mean every routine, you know, there's a lot of people out there going, get up at five o'clock in the morning, go for a run, meditate, read books, do what, that, that, that doesn't matter that. that, that everybody's routine can be different. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I work from 10 o'clock at night to midnight, them two hours at times when I'm, my kids are in bed, my wife's quite happy to be reading or doing something else. And them two hours are key to me. Mm. because I would rather spend five till seven with my kids having yeah. dinner. Yeah. The difference. So I work, I, I don't work then I work that. But one thing I learned many years ago was when I worked in the health clubs was the health club ran like clockwork because of a roster. Yes. He's working this shift. She's working this shift. He comes in at this time. Baba, design yourself your perfect week. So yeah. what time you get up, when you're putting the time to work, when you're mm. putting time to eat for your family, yeah. when you're putting time for your kids, when you're putting time for your exercise, your meal planning, whatever it is, but get that week planned out and follow it to the T yeah. for a good six to seven weeks and it will bring you some structure. Mm. And then you'll start to follow that as a, so that means you'll get your work done. You'll, you yeah. won't neglect your family. You won't neglect your health. You won't neglect your, your, your mental health. So plan around it and just be easy on yourself because yeah. make sure that you eat well hydrate exercise because yeah. when we were saying before we went on camera yeah. you know if you if you might if your mind's not right your business will never be right yes so mm -hmm. work work on your mind and your and your and your and your mentality because the stronger your mind the stronger you can you know accept challenge and, and there's just one more thing, Chris, that you mentioned earlier as well was um, you mentioned, I call it staying in your lane, you know, you know, pick your, pick your, 
skill area, work at it, or yes. work really hard. And you mentioned mm. something earlier, which was about, you know, there's always room in the market for someone to be the best. Yeah, always room for the best. Yeah, so just tell me a little bit about that before we, before we sign off. Well, wisdom was but, yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, I think a lot of people get, you know, as we know, you know, fear. Fear is such a, you know, it, it, it messes around with people's futures, you know, because they get told from other people that, oh, don't do that. Or, so a lot of fear kind of holds people back in a mm. big way. So a lot of people can say, look, there's, all, there's people already doing that. Don't do that. But that, that might be your passion to do that. You know, and I think you've, if you want to have a happy life, you've got to wake up and want to do what you're going to do. Yeah. You've got to, that, that's it. If you're not doing what you want to do, stop. Now, stop yeah. and yeah. change it. Yeah. That's, that's the best advice I could give because the more you're passionate about what you do, so when I say that there's always room for the best, it means it doesn't matter how many people are doing what you want to do. You can, you can be the best. Yeah. And there's always room for the best. So if that's what you're passionate about, get involved in it, work at it, stick to it, feed it, eat it, sleep it every day, and you'll, yeah. and you'll achieve it. You'll achieve it. But it's all about mindset, you know, because everybody gets down, down days and bad days. But you've got to believe in yourself. Your self-talk's very important. Yeah. Chris, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, pleasure. Leave it on that that amazing bit of wisdom so <laughs> thank you so much have a uh, time and i'm just gonna hit the stop button all right okay thank you